So, kill these, that stops the process running. And now, what we want to do is, so we need to make the game itself, right? And our main class here is called My Cool Pong Game. This is going to be the game. So, what you want to do now is make a game object. I mean, there's nothing in it yet, but well, let's make it. We'll call it Game. Uh, new. So, My Cool Pong Game. Game equals My New My Cool Pong Game. New My Cool Pong Game. So, Game is being declared here. Its type is My Cool Pong Game. Its name is called Game. I could call this anything I want. Uh, the type I can't call anything I want here because that is actually the name of the class here and the file itself, mycoolponggame.java. So I've made a game and then I've declared it say, by saying new mycoolponggame. That assigns it an instance of mycoolponggame. And you know, a class is this here, a description of the object. But once it runs, it becomes a live piece of code and we call that an instance of the class um, but not too much on that you know you can read about object oriented stuff just trying to give a general overview of something simple right so what would we want to do now inside this uh, while loop let's just get rid of this because we don't want it it clogs things up you can do that to get rid of it that's called commenting it out or you can do or if I had uh, something on this, if I had two versions of it, you know, like, like, oh, it's a great time for the keyboard to play up, like that, I could comment out both by doing one comment there and one comment there. That's a sort of, that catches more than one line. Okay, so you would assume in this loop here, let me delete this because it's nice to keep your code clean. Easier on the brain if you can read it and stuff like that, you know. Keep things readable, keep things clean and simple. Otherwise you get confused later, or even now. Right. So in this loop, you would assume that the game would update the screen. Right, so you put game dot repaint. Now what that will say is, can you redraw the screen infinitely on every loop? That's a lot of repainting because the com depending on how fast your computer is, you'll get millions of executions and stuff like that. But there's a way to counter that, you know, you don't want that to happen. Well, we'll deal with that in a minute. Now, you think, well, okay, why is that repaint not working? It's not working because the method doesn't exist. This, uh, what we call uh, methods, are these chunks of code. So I could make a method, private, void repaint like that that is a method and I put my code in here and it's private because we only need it inside here it's void because it doesn't need to return anything and it's called repaint because I decided to call it repaint now again you don't need to worry about private void and all that or even methods too much but you should at least uh, work out that they're like a little chunk of code that can be called upon to perform a task but actually, we don't want to do this. In our trick, and this is why I talk about Pong, because it's got so many different uh, assets to the, the learning. The trick I'm going to use is something called inheritance, which you'll learn about later. But you type extends, and then J panel. And what that means is extends means it, it, it inherits all of the capabilities of the J panel, right? And the J panel is red, and we want this to. Uh, not be read, so we import Java X dot swing dot J panel. Right, what has that done for us? Well, what, what it has done is it's given us the capability of a J panel. And if you hold down the, is it the alt, hold down the control key and click on J panel, you can have a look in here, and you can see it extends J component, which is meaningful because component has now you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. Component has its own paint loop its own pa repaint method uh, don't I, oops I don't need to find it but uh, you know it has um, a paint method anyway so when you inherit from J panel you get all of the functionality of the repaint 
from the J layer, the J panel. Now I'm not explaining that very well, but what it boils down to is that you can actually use a method that is part of the J panel without having to code it yourself. Oh, that's good because then you know you save a hell of a lot of hassle. You re code reuse is pivotal in in all object oriented languages. All right, so you have to actually use public void because you've got to make it the same as the method in the parent class in the J panel. So we have to copy the J panel one, but then we put our own implementation, our own code in it instead of the code it puts in it. Right? So I just know that it's public void paint and it takes a graphics G and at this point you can uh, you have to type override because what override means is that oh this is, is recognizing that uh, J panel has this method and we're actually overriding it and implementing it ourselves. So you have to put that notation, otherwise it won't it won't realize what we're doing. Graphics, same trick. Alt enter, import that Java .awt graphics. That's the one we want. And you can see override went was went from being red to normal because it's accepted now. Now graphics is recognized and imported up here. It's accepted now that. Um, Paint is a method that is really in JPanel and is really being overridden. And now the other thing we want is we want the free functionality from the JPanel. So we call super, which is the super class, which means the instance of JPanel that we're, that we're inheriting from dot paint, because it, its method is called paint2, and pass it in anything it needs, which is exactly what we need, because we're copying the same thing. So you pass in the G that we just got. Right. A little bit complicated, but again, mostly boilerplate code. Really not that hard if you can just look at it on a screen or in a book. Now, what do we do on paint? Well, first of all, let's put a message in to make sure it's happening. Print. So you type system.out.println and you'll say, hey, look, I'm painting. And then you run that. And what we should get is that this loop at the bottom, this true loop at the bottom, will constantly call game.repaint. Um, it's interesting because it's not. Oops. Oh, that's my demo pong. That's probably why. Let me quit this. NetBeans is quite slow and can get a bit confused, especially when you're recording the screen. Right, let's just kill all the tasks and start again. You can use this thing in the bottom to do that. Right, so you click on My Cool Pong Game. And if you can see my mouse pointer has gone weird, that's just a graphics card glitch I'm suffering. All right, my awesome Pong game has come up. And the output window, give me the output window, is not producing anything. Now, wonder why. I actually genuinely do wonder why as well this time. I'm not trying to be rhetorical for teaching purposes. Now, I'm thinking... One problem that I wanted to leave to later is that this is called sort of this this loop here is called busy waiting, I guess. Well, yeah, busy waiting because it's infinite. It never gives the computer ever time to do anything. So even if it's going repaint, 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 it can never repaint properly. The machine will lock up before it will draw simple things because even a supercomputer, even the ten best crays in the world linked together, if you stick them in an infinite loop then you're, you're essentially making them turn on themselves you know using their own energy to to completely halt up so what you want to do is you want to give them a bit of time to relax so that other things can happen so we go thread dot sleep and the reason we do that is because everything is a thread everything in in uh, Every process is a thread, really, in a computer, and they have multiple threads doing different processes. But if one thread decides to take...